two, one, two. It's super windy everywhere. Maybe this right here is gonna sound a little better. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. We just spent like 30 minutes driving around the whole Bonnie Lake area, finding a place that doesn't have wind. The day I wanna make a video, for some reason it's windy. I tried to make a video with AirPods in, but apparently iPhone doesn't have um, a way to take a video with AirPods. And the only way to do that would be through a third-party app, which absolutely sucks. But you're here because you want a GLI. You're either thinking about buying one or you've already bought one. Now, these cars are great. I love it. I personally had two. I've had the MK7, so it was the 2019 GLI. And I have this one right here. This is my 2014 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now again, I do excuse myself for like the wind noise because um, it's very windy today. I've decided to make a video and it's really windy. So hopefully, hopefully the quality of the sound is gonna be good. Now we're gonna go over why you should buy a Jetta and maybe some reasons you should and maybe it's not the best fit for you. But honestly, there's a lot more good reasons than there are bad. If this is your first time watching my YouTube videos, welcome, subscribe, comment, it helps a whole ton. It might not be much for you guys, you know, it's just a click of a button, you know, typing some words out in the comment section. But for me, it means a whole ton because we're striving to hit 1,000 subscribers. Hopefully by the end of this year, it's a, it's a somewhat big goal considering I only have like, what, 250 right now, 260. So with your support, we'll get there real quick. Now, first reason why you should buy a Volkswagen GLI is it's a great first car, right? It's a great first car for if you're either 16, 18, 20, doesn't matter your age, you know? If this is your first car, maybe you're trying to convince your parents to buy your first car, it's a great first car. And why, I'll explain in a bit. The reason why it's a good car, especially a good first car, is the miles per gallon. So this has the inline four 2.0 turbo, which gets, I average personally about 27 miles per gallon, right? I believe on the internet it says you'll get anywhere from I think it's 22 to 29 if I'm understanding correctly but me just driving it casually like I take the highway every day I drive through the city every day I average about 27 28 and then if I'm going on a long ride like let's say like a 50 minute straight highway drive I'll get 30 31 miles per gallon easily and I've heard stories where people will get even better miles per gallon and that depends on your you know if you have fresh engine oil if you have uh, fresh spark plugs if you have real you know if you've done your maintenance you'll get even better miles per gallon of course if you're slacking and you're using like old oil that spark plugs you'll get less i think the guy behind me is going to stop and ask if i'm okay or if i need help well, or... yeah yeah he definitely he uh he, he overtook me he was like yeah i'm like in the middle of nowhere and taking a video so it's kind of self-explanatory and this is like very deep Bonnie Lake Tipoli area, like nobody ever drives here, so I'm even surprised there's a car here. Because we're in like the new construction zone, so they're still trying to like build stuff here. So, number one, miles per gallon. Miles per gallon is a big one. And that's a way to convince your parents, you know, if you're trying to buy for a first car, uh, because it has good miles per gallon. Like daily drive to school, work, college, whatever. 28 miles per gallon is really good. Now, that's really good considering this is considered uh, entry level sports car. So first of all, you get 20 miles per gallon and you're pretty quick. So this is the inline Ford 2.0 turbo. So I believe stock, if I'm not mistaken, you're making about 215, 220 horsepower and about like 230 foot pounds of torque. I can't remember the numbers exactly. And you can easily tune them. So these cars are great tuner cars because it has a turbo, right? So I'm on a stage one plus uh, unitronic tune and I'm pushing about 295 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque, which is great. I mean, it's more than enough power for daily driving and I'm still getting 27, 28 miles per gallon. So you get great miles per gallon. You're pretty quick on the road, very nimble, very fun to drive with that much horsepower. Uh, and also you can you can tune them um, not only performance wise but they look good aesthetically so you can add some lips you can put some wheels on lower it this one's lowered on neo speed coilovers um, I recommend them honestly they're pretty good coilovers so second point is tunability and like performance and aftermarket modifications I think we have another car coming in for some odd reason and I think it's slowing down now this one just flew by so again, second point, tunability, performance, and just aesthetics, aftermarket support. These Jetta GLIs have really good aftermarket support. You'll find a lot of lips, diffusers, trunk lips, wheels, coilovers, uh, headlights, taillights. You'll find them all on eBay, AliExpress, uh, more popular um, actual websites. You'll find them on ECS tuning, you know, you'll find them on Euro tuning uh, and 
I forgot the other brand, but you'll, you'll find a lot of aftermarket support. And my third point would be affordability. So these cars are pretty affordable to buy. Um, well, for the flight. But um, you can find some. So let's say you're looking at a GLI under 100,000 miles. You'll, you'll probably definitely find one for, I'll say 100, oh sorry from ten thousand to like fifteen thousand dollars if you're looking for a clean title there are a lot of rebuild titles and those go for anywhere from like seven to ten thousand so they're pretty budget cars anywhere from like nine to fifteen thousand if you do a little negotiation you can drop it down a little bit so they're very affordable especially for first cars and that's under 100k so hopefully you get like a lower mileage one this one's at seventy five thousand right now so we still got a long ways to go so very affordable you can definitely convince uh, your parents i keep saying your parents but like i feel like the audience that's gonna watch uh this video is for some reason gonna be students or college students that are looking to buy their first car and i'm sure their parents are gonna help them out because my parents did but um yeah and my fourth point i guess this would be my last point would be reliability so i haven't driven this one too long only about three months but my first mk7 gli which has a similar engine i've driven for about a year and that one was no issues i mean just do your oil change every 5,000 miles right replace your spark plugs if you need them replaced replace your brake pads do like the necessary maintenance and you're fine you're not going to see any issues right um i haven't heard any like oil consumption issues no coolant issues none of that sort so i would say this car is definitely reliable but it is a german car so you do need to take care of it it's not like a toyota camry or a civic where you can run it with no oil you know you gotta you gotta put some nice you gotta invest a little bit of money but it'll it'll take care of you in the long run so so far we got miles per gallon right first point would be good miles per gallon second one would be performance right the aftermarket support the tuning uh, third one would be affordability and fourth one would be reliability so all great points um now to the downsides of the car and honestly i can only think of one down well i can think of two downsides i guess so the first downside is the fact that it's front wheel drive and that can be a downside and and not a downside well the thing is it gets good miles per gallon because it is a front wheel drive car because the power goes just to the front wheels it doesn't have to spread it uh, the power through the drive shafts like to the back wheels and the front wheels like Audi like A4s for example why A4s uh, get a little bit less miles per gallon than GLIs because they're all wheel drive but that could be a downside when it's like heavy rain or like snow it could be a little bit sketchy to drive on it if you don't know how to drive now if you know how to drive a front wheel drive car if, if you're like you know if you know your car you can definitely get away with driving in the snow driving in the rain I've driven my GLIs in the snow easily you know as long as you don't push it too hard, don't pretend it's an all-wheel drive car, you're fine. But it could definitely be a downside. For example, if you're like pushing, pushing like I feel like a stage two tune, uh, you start spinning, right? I'm on a stage one plus and I'm already spinning. Um, if I go from like a dig from just zero and I uh, just floor it, I'll start spinning, right? Just pour more traction off everything, I'll start spinning. So that could be like somewhat of a downside, but it's not that big of a downside, you know? Like for example, if I'm racing someone, I just have to lightly accelerate and then floor it when I'm at like 50 miles per hour so that's that's a downside but i just had to include it in the video because you know now the second downside i would say is quality of the interior and but i will say i'm just comparing it to the cars that i've had previously which was like audis i've had rams i've had uh, i've driven bmws i didn't have one personally but i've driven them i've had the newer gli and just the interior on the gli it's a great car but the quality of the interior isn't as good as those Audis, for example, uh, or those BMWs. But that also comes into the fact that this is the more affordable version of like the Audi A4, you know, or like the Volkswagen Golf R, you know, that's why you would see like different, different interior quality. So it's just a little bit on the cheaper side inside, but that's not that big of a problem, especially if you're just using it for daily driver, you don't need it to be like Alcantara seats and roofing. So that's, that's one little downside, but like like i said not that big of a downside not to buy the car you know i would still buy it. i mean that's why i bought mine well that's it pretty much for the video i hope you guys enjoyed like i say like comment subscribe for you guys it's not a big thing you just press a couple buttons but for me like every time i see someone subscribe to the page like i get super excited it gives me motivation to like build videos and um lately so i've been kind of like my youtube channel has been growing recently over the past like four months no i think over the past like three months i gained 50 subscribers which is kind of a lot for me personally and that just helped me like 
grow motivation and like dedication to building my YouTube channel because that's the goal to build the YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everything. And I'm just trying to get more into like better quality videos. And just the fact is I have an iPhone. Um, it's a great iPhone, but I'm just trying to use, use that phone as a camera, as a full setup, which I think I'm doing pretty good. You know, hopefully you guys like the quality of the video, the sound. I'm gonna get a mic soon so you guys don't have to worry about the wind noise. Uh, but yeah. I'm literally trying to do my best at this stuff. So appreciate it, subscribe. I appreciate it when you guys subscribe. Now, thanks again for watching. Drive safe, be safe.